Now you may see rope swinging on the internet and you might think it looks really fun because that's what we're trying to, to make it look like. But let's stop and talk about the risks, not just the rewards. This How Not to Rope Swing series is intended to talk about where the risks are and how to mitigate them and how the systems are set up so you don't just randomly try this stuff on your own. Viewer discretion advised. These are a few clips of people who did things that uh, it resulted in them hitting stuff. Now rope swinging isn't just as simple as clipping your rope off to something and swinging. Like you see in this clip, you don't just swing back and forth, but you start to create this figure eight shape, which is why he came back and hit the post on his way back. Now by the looks of his body positioning, he may be unconscious, right at the level of the water, but fortunately they had an elaborate rescue plan established before they started this. No, probably not. So now they're like totally screwed. To this Moab clip, you, you really gotta make sure you account for physics and you don't just drop down and hit stuff. And you really gotta understand how to mitigate how much force there is so your shoes don't fall off. In 1998 at the Auburn Rock Quarry, somebody misjudged the length of their rope swing and they decked and hit the ground and they died as a result. Something similar happened at Corona Arch where the rope was too long stretched and they hit the ground and they died. And we talked more about that in depth in our first podcast style video uh, with Andy Lewis that you can find in the description below. Slam straight to the other side of the cliff. We're like, oh my God, that was my hip. And here's a real butt clencher for you. Uh, make sure you have a certified rigging plate whenever you do that. And if you think your cheeks are tight when you're watching that, Imagine how tight his are. We're probably loose now. Now we're compiling all this information in the How Not to Rope Swing ebook that you can go to hownotto.com and look at. So you can see the compilation of all the stuff we're talking about in written form because some things are better in that way. And then some things are better than we you just hear the conversations naturally. Now the conversation we're gonna have in this episode is with Logan Henning and he started Rope Swing Rigging Facebook group where you can collaborate with other people and talk about questions you might have. He wrote an entire chapter in the How Not to Rope Swing ebook that we got, so you can get a lot of his thoughts that may not have been brought up in this video. Now, the reason I was hanging out with him was because we were rigging a Highline in a nuclear missile silo. And you can actually check out that episode if you sign up for our emails, as it's not a published video. Or if someday I decide to publish it, the link will be in the description below as well. Now, compiling engaging conversations with some of the best rope swingers in the world is a passion project of mine. It is definitely, hopefully, not going to hurt the Channel, but I really love doing it. If you want to support what we're doing, buying stuff from HowNotTo.store does help a lot. We do sell a ton of climbing gear, a lot of stuff you need for rope swinging, but it's not mostly about that. But we also have a support page if you want to spot us 20 bucks, or if you become a supporter member, then you can even get discounts on gear. Uh, Logan currently ho uh, holds the solo record, right? A solo rigging record. Solo rigging record, not free solo. Not free solo. What's your length? 733 meters. So 733 meters, I did uh, 291 in Yosemite, and that kind of like stuck for a while, because um, it's more fun to rig with friends. But uh, uh, I think you like the logistics of figuring your shit out and yeah. dialing the process. I, I like how you have to do all the logistics yourself, and I think it's just nice spending some time up in the mountains by yourself sometimes. Yeah. People solo climb, rope solo climb. Um, I think it's the same vibe. But we're gonna talk about rope jumping in this video, and I'm gonna just, pester him with questions about um, the span, the jump ropes, that fulcrum in the middle, exits, uh, hauling systems. Uh, same thing we do with uh, anybody we're doing these rope jumping podcast interviews with. And then this is all gonna be on the rope jumping uh, blog textbook that kind of almost summarizes all of these together. I didn't wanna just share what I know because there's so much, so much value in other people's perspective. but. Since I am leaving for the airport in 30 minutes, I'm going to eat breakfast while you, while you talk. <laughs> right on. <clears throat> so I'll get, just give a little bit of introduction of... Context, yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the rope swing that I do. So uh, me, Mateo, and Trout, all front range guys, we host a community highline gathering every year. We're out at the Fruit Bowl, uh, and we go out there every spring and fall and rig a rope swing and try to get as many people to jump as we can. Uh, we use the community highline gathering as like an introduction so people can see what highlining and rope swinging and desert life is all about and so we've jumped over 1300 people now i think on a rope swing you got me beat <laughs> i hate letting people jump my system i have to yeah. haul it back up <laughs> oh it's all fun well you must have your haul system dialed then yep okay so I'll, i'm excited to talk to you about that because that's 10 ways to skin that cat mm -hmm. span 
Webbing versus rope. What are your thoughts for the horizontal? We're already rigging a bunch of high lines for the gathering, so I think it's just logistically simpler to rig one more high line. And the way that we do it is uh, we, we use the fulcrum of the, the rope swing is at the center of the high line at a connection point. So uh, At a segment. Yeah, at a segment. You have two separate, basically, pieces of webbing. Correct. So you're not trying to walk on the span when you rig this. It's dedicated for the rope jump. Correct. Like, there's enough high line, other high lines up that this is okay. a specific rig for rope jumping. Uh, sometimes when I want to try to walk it and rope swing it, I try to make that fulcrum almost removable mm -hmm. or, or an add-on later. Here's our fulcrum. Four aluminum re -shrings, re -shrings, I'm sorry. Through, just kind of thread through the high line. On our Eno split, we use the main loops of the webbings to thread some shackles through each other and through the leash rings to keep it stable. It will not move more than that. We have it padded here. Um, we tie our knots, our super eights offset just for easier management and visual. Webbing type. Uh, what's the length? What's the length you're working with? And stretchy versus static. Uh, it's somewhere in the middle. We use a polyester line, so it's mid stretch. Um, we don't want something like tubular nylon because that'll have so much stretch that we're gonna have to start worrying about abrasion at the anchors, at mm. just psychically bouncing that much. Um, and length about fifty meters. It's whatever Dean's line is because we do the the classic swing out at the fruit bowl. Oh, you're doing this at the fruit bowl. Yes. Gotcha. Um, know your area before you do anything. Laws are constantly changing there, and this is just, um, I don't know if it's legal still, or if it's legal to do as a group, or it's definitely not legal if it's a paid event. Correct. So just know know your area, but a lot of our context comes from the Fruit Bowl because that's where we did it for years. Yep. So we, <clears throat> all throughout our history, we've been at the Fruit Bowl while it was legal, and with legis legislation changing, we're uh, staying up to date on that. So... Um, Backup. Do you like it tight or loose? And do you like it to bottom out on the backup to help help the main to work in tandem? Or do you like the main just to do the job? So we <clears throat> keep main and backup tight. And when I say tight, it's not like the old days where you dual tension. But we just don't have the backup loop, so it's less things swinging around getting tangled with each other. And how tight are you making? Dean's line is what, 30 meters? 35? Yeah. How yeah, tight that are, sounds a lot more right than 50 meters, 30 meters. Yeah. So how tight are you making the main line? Two homies tight, just a little three to one. <laughs> <laughs> two, homie, two homies to one? Yeah, so probably something like one and a half, two kilonewtons. Do you ever rig the insanity swing or the one that's further out? Yeah, so we've done that. Uh, so off of the insanity swing, for those aren't, uh, who aren't familiar, that's when you go down uh, to where Dean's line uh, and beyond, and you, that's your exit point. So you jump off of that out into the, the greater cliff. And so let's talk about span on that. Same webbing, same strategy, two no. homies tight. Uh, so I don't think that webbing plays that much of a difference into your rope swinging experience. So th on that one, we actually use 150 meters or 180 meters or 130 meters, depending on which gap you use. Mm, yep. um, uh, there's a bunch of different options you can rig your fulcrum to, and we always do it on blue just because that's what we've got. Wait, do you know the stretch on blue at 4K and 6K and is it like a 10% like Feather Pro? Uh, I want to say it's less than Feather Pro, but it's still one of those like okay. mid to low stretch. Um, a big a big thing I always want to explain to people if they're talking about Fruit Bowl lines. You jump an 80 meter off the classic, you're dead. Okay? That's why you throw a bag first is you don't know what you don't know. You're not testing a specific thing when you throw a bag first. Always go second, throw a bag first. Um, it doesn't have to be 180 pounds of rock, but like, um, I mean, it's ideal if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and usually your, your haul line is attached to the bag. You're not trying to do the more detailed hauls that we get into later. But um, make sure you understand that the ground is still close. And if you move that high line just over one location and you make it a little soupy and then you jump a 70 meter, you could die. It's like, you got to understand like, the math changes very fast with one component changing. Don't it, don't die. <laughs> and with that too, so if you've got, say your your fulcrum point is 70 meters away from the edge and you've got 70 meter ropes, Ooh. it's just like when you're high lining. You, you've got to hold the tension to hold it perfectly horizontal to you to the cliff edge so that you can jump. So that's mm -hmm. a lot of force to hold the ropes while you're trying to tie in and everything. 
So your rope actually has to be a little bit longer, but you don't want it so much longer that you're going to drop and it turns into a bungee jump. And this is all perpendicular rope swings to where you are perpendicular to the high line and you're swinging this way. Correct. Um, Dana was in line, the leaning tower rope swing, and I had the, like an idiot, I had a fulcrum in the middle. Because, right, you want to be as far away from the cliff as possible. I was 150 meters away and I had 170 meters of rope. And I literally couldn't hold the rope up to clip in. So we had to like literally slide out and move the fulcrum, which luckily the fulcrum was like changeable. I could put it at any segment. Mm. Fulcrum. How do you connect it? Rigging plate? Uh, no. <clears throat> so like I said before, uh, we use the connection point of two different high lines. So even though it's only a 30 meter line, uh, it's easy to hold it in place when you've got those sewn loops connected to each other in a segmented high line. So what we do is we use... Depending on how much safety ratio we want, we use between two and four bomber steel rings as our uh, fulcrum point. <laughs> four is what we started off with, and we've been working our way down. It's not that the ring will break. It's kind of nice to spread out that force on the... Exactly. Weapon. Yeah. Yeah, so when you, you're swinging, you've got like cyclic loading on your soft goods with a, a metal bit. It's nice to have more surface area, so it's yeah. less abrasion per... If you hit the same spot on your webbing, does your webbing get flat? I haven't get it. Oh. <laughs> Flat ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Nerdy joke. Sorry if you're not into rope swinging. I don't know how you got this far into this video if you're not. How do you hold the four bomber rings there so they don't swing left or right? Yeah, so we put them right on the connection point and then we use soft shackles uh, to hold it okay. to each. So we've got soft shackle going to each zone loop so it can't shift outside of that. So we're going to jump real quick to the hall system because you have to have the hall rope come, well, the thing that holds up the hall rope go up to the fulcrum and down. Do you put that off to the side? Do you put your ropes, this will transition into ropes. Do you yep. put them like this or do you put them like this? Nope, we put them right next to each other. Right next to each other. Yep, we've never had issues with tangling. Well, that's not true. We've had issues with tangling one time, but we've jumped 1300 times, so. Okay, that's, yeah. okay. And do you find that it twists around its, the ropes twists? They can, um, but when you've got like the ends are tied together and the, the fulcrum is tied together. So if it does get tangled, you can just walk apart with the two strands and get them to untangle. And so the way to get back to your original question, um, the way that we do the haul line is every time, uh, so we've got this 300 meter rope, a longer than you need to be, um, that we drop down to the person. So we've got someone off to the side manning the paracord, uh, which drops the haul rope down to them. So yep. imagine this, someone's just jumped and they're down at the bottom, they're hanging. We had the, for the entire jump, we've had the haul rope suspended up above them. So we actually pull the haul rope, which is connected. It's, you've got your ropes and you've got a ring around your ropes. Single ring. We actually use a figure eight. Okay, right? that's, eight okay. Plate, so that you can tie uh, the... The eye, right? Yeah. So, so you're not sharing the, that rope. So it separates it from the climbing ropes. Yeah, just a little bit more separation between your paracord and the, the jump ropes because you've got your, your hull rope connected to the eye and the paracord connected to the eye. And actually I'm working on a new device that will replace this because sometimes this is actually what causes the issue is the flat eight plate is flat. Yeah, and, and it's, it's lifting going, up. Yeah, so it's, it's wanting to be in a different plane and it can get tangled. So uh, if you join rope swing riggers, then you can see like the process of trying to improve that. Basically, the bigger that ring can be is the better because the ropes, if they do twist at all while somebody's down there, it has to get past that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and also, your ropes are going to be tied at some point. So if you've, got a, <clears throat> if you've got a figure eight that's about the same size as that knot, which has happened, sometimes you'll pull that eight above your knot and now you can't drop the whole rope. So every time somebody. somebody swings, they take that webbing and the webbing is doing this, the span. And when it goes out, that paracord that's holding up that haul line gets tight and it pulls that high, that uh, haul line up into the knot. And you gotta stop that ring or whatever you're using it from hitting it. Mm -hmm. um, how do you hold up the paracord? Where in the spot? Is it right next to your jump ropes? So, so you have everything <clears throat> just like right there? I'd say it's probably about five meters away. Uh, so what we do is we tape um, a pass to our high line. Um, so it's wrapped around and then taped into place, uh, which mm. it's not super important that it's that strongly in place because it'd be nice to have a sewn loop on the high line for sure, just to make sure it stays in place. But we've got to pass about five meters towards the cliff edge of who's holding the paracord. And it's got a pulley in it so you can drop, let out and pull in the paracord really easily. And that paracord again is what connects to the eight plate 
and pulls up and drops the haul rope. And now this is what our hauling mechanism looks like. We've got our steel bomber ring, our haul rope. Haul rope is tied on the steel bomber ring. We have the carabiner, which is tied to our paracord. And then we've got the quick draws, which the person actually clips to their belay loop. Then we have our paracord, which is how we manage, which is how we manage our haul rope. So right now it is being, it's being held up and elevated. So it is out of the way of our next jumper. But once they jump, we just loosen from this side and it runs down this pulley and it will, that leash ring will just run down the jump ropes with the haul rope and connect to the jumper. So that's kind of how we have it. We taped it up here just for padding, making sure that there's no abrasion happening. Tape the pulley in place. Just making sure everything stays nice and tight. So sometimes I like to separate my jump ropes, which doesn't allow that ring to get sucked all the way up into the knots. And then I use swivels here because I want just, I don't want to barf down there. <laughs> and then um, my paracord's over here. So I, have, I end up separating my entire system out. <clears throat> Mine looks more like that. Okay, that's his system. Yep. And what I'll do is I have a dedicated three meter piece of webbing. So I have that sew and loop to sew and loop segment within three meters of each other. And that way, um, or are they one meter? They're like one meter. They're just like these short things. Okay. Like about that big with eyes on both ends. Mm -hmm. And so I can have, and I put two of them. So they're like this. So I have this segment, this segment, and this segment. Right on. Because that more, they're redundant. The more sewn loops you add in a system and the more connections you add, adds the risk of them failing, but they're like redundant and bomber. It's never, I don't think ever been a failure at any point. So to spread out all of that has prevented a lot of that. You don't want the paracord to end up wrapping around your jump ropes. No. Because then it won't go down. And if you can't haul somebody, especially if you're jumping 1,300 people, chances are 1,290 of them don't know how to get back up without being hauled. That's true. 1,295, I'd bet. <laughs> we, uh, like I said, it's for new people trying to get into the outdoor world. So, so if you are going to haul and then jump somebody who doesn't know how to come back up, you, like, you bet, like better have that dialed. Or a rescue plan. Or a plan. rescue plan. <laughs> and, 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 and a, and a rescue, rescue plan. plan. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you better have your shit together if you're jumping people who don't know what they're doing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's why we have the fulcrum point. Uh, so two fulcrum points. One for the actual rope that's swinging. Yep. And then a fulcrum point for the paracord that you're letting the, the haul ropes out. So once you drop that A plate down, we have a double quick link. So it's like quick link that uses two dog bones so that you can actually quick the, click the A plate to your harness once it drops down to you. So you don't have to take anything off. Correct. So the yeah. the quick draw stays on there all the time and you clip in and then you can start getting pulled up. Let's get in that in a second. Are your jump ropes like this or do you have one longer than the other? Do you have a 60 and a 70? Or uh, do you have two 70s? We got two 70s. So you're jumping, they see the equal amount of force. Correct. When you're swinging, the swing itself absorbs a lot of that factor mm -hmm. if you are worried about the factor two ropes are going to stretch half as much because that's correct they're both working against like if you jumped with two bungee cords you're not going to fall as far so if you want it to be softer you you stagger the height um like the the biggest one i did was uh 170 meters but one of the ropes was 10 meters shorter they were both tight at, especially at that length. But it's nice to have just a little bit softer catch. That's important you say that um, about them both being tight. Maybe it's not important, but that's why we've thought it's important um, about both your ropes being tight. Because if one's saggy and has like a big loop in it while the other one is tight, then you might get them to wrap around each other. Oh. I'm fairly certain that's the cause of a core shot um, on someone else's rope swing rig. With that being loose and then it wraps around the other one and you're jumping on it and the rope gets all that friction against each other. So that's a good point. Double tight fixes that problem or spreading them out where they touch at the top fixes that problem. But just know that's, you don't want anything wrapping around itself. I try to be funny and rig uh, seven webbings for the span to be like seven times redundant. And the webbings all wrapped around, it was actually really bad. <laughs> it wasn't dangerous, it was just a cluster. So don't get stuff wrapped around each other. Are you clipping people in? How do you clip people in? We're clipping. Um, and actually we were just discussing this last week if what we're doing is super kosher, so maybe you could bring some light to that. 
Uh, what we do is <clears throat> we tie, with both the ropes, we tie um, a Super 8. Yep. So it's got the two loops, and then we use two steel locking carabiners. So you have a BFK. Yeah, basically okay. we've got a BFK. Which and is redundant. That's how we rig our anchors. Mm -hmm. It's independent enough. Yeah. T take a knife to it. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. But then with our jump ropes, the way that we have this tied this is in a Super 8. So we've got two ropes and four loops coming out of our 8. And then we've got opposite and opposing locking steel carabiners. And the reason we use steelies as opposed to aluminums is it just gives us a little bit of a better safety ratio. And the way we clip it into the belay loops, we clip through both hard points, like as if you were tying into a high line. Um, and since you normally don't want to do that with your carabiners, that can get some weird tri-loading. That's why we use two steelies, so we have the redundancy and it's way strong enough even if we're tri-loading it. And what's your reason for the steelies? Um, just because since we're clipping through both hard points. Steel carabiners. Yep, steel carabiners. Since we're clipping through both hard points in your harness, which you shouldn't do with carabiners because you can tri-load your carabiner. Um, we use two steelies, and steelies are much stronger than aluminum carabiners. Uh, and since we want the redundancy on your harness too of being able to clip both hard points, uh, we use two steel, ca steel carabiners. So just like the amount of forces that we're putting on the steel carabiners is still way below that, that so strength. Threat. So the, the benefit of steel carabiners, and I recommend it when you can, um, you can cross load them at a much higher force. Uh, they can handle, I wouldn't call it cyclic loading, 1300 jumps. You can get 1300 cycles on a slack line in a park and in 10 minutes. Um, but it's, they're about 50% stronger. Um, also be careful, you don't want, if it's clipped up high because you're trying to clip chest and thing, you don't want it, like you don't want anything hard hitting people in the face. Mm -hmm. So uh, just be aware, like, are you, you're, you're clipping to the two hard points in a harness? Correct. So I personally hate that. Everything's super good enough. But it's like, you're kind of like tri-loading that carabiner. Exactly. So I like the belay loop. It gives, it's like, but it's not redundant. So what I'll do is I'll add a soft shackle to the belay loop to add a belay loop. So now you have two belay loops and it gives you just a lot more freedom to move around. It's not so crunched in there, especially if you're wearing a big wall harness. It's kind of like, it's not designed for a carabiner to be in both those things. Um, it's awkward. It works. Nobody's died because of it. My methods is awkward, like clipping both. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting you say that because that's actually the solution we came up with last week when I was talking to Mateo is uh, just use the steelies on your, your belay loop. And then if you have a soft shackle, which is a little bit longer, you, you still have all the redundancy. It's easy trying. enough to take, especially if you have a handful of them. Mm -hmm. The next person jumping is like, all right, feed this through. You can even put tape on it. There's self-locking ones. There's rubber band style of locking. Like it's, they're not going to come off. Mm -hmm. Especially if you double wrap it with a five mil, that's about yay long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like fucking beef, right? <clears throat> and then um, and then you can, it's so much easier to clip. And then unclip when they get to the cliff. Because the most dangerous part of any rope swing is the person manning the, the top. Because they're near the cliff all day. And they're potentially going to take a factor two fall on their personal anchor. Mm -hmm. um, or they're just like... I don't know, you're clipping on clipping things all day. You're, you're, you're the one at the biggest risk if you're at the cliff edge. Yeah. So, so to make your job easier, I think is valuable. We use a tripod on the edge uh, when we're jumping, so that like plays into the hauling system. And you're always clipped into it? Always clipped okay. into that. So to explain our hang frame setup, the reason we use a hang frame is so that we can haul people up, and this is suspended so that once they're hauled up to the cliff edge, they're already above the cliff edge and there's no weird scrambling up onto the ledge. And the way we secure our hang frame is we've got, it's like a tripod, and it's all made out of steel, so it's really strong. Uh, we've got our central leg, which is extended out, and that's what the haul rope is connected to, and our jump ropes uh, connect to up here. And then we secure it down. The tops of these guys are pulled back to bolts, so they're being held back, and then we pull them down to this bolt directly underneath. And then our main frame here, that is being pulled back by pulley systems back to bolts as well. So uh, everything in here, and it's also being held forward. So everything in here is opposing the forces we would see when we're hauling in order to make sure that it doesn't collapse once we're hauling. When you're setting up your hang frame for your rope swing, the most important things to consider are where the forces are gonna be acting on it so that you can make sure that it's planted or uh, anchored to the ground in a way that won't let it to collapse. And also make sure that the point that you're hauling from is strong enough because you can get a lot of forces when someone's being hauled from this point right here. 
And then the last thing is we've got a piece of Edge Pro on the cliff because as we're hauling people up, our haul rope will be up against the cliff edge. That's so, something I've seen not enough people take serious enough is being near the cliff edge. Oh, dude, it's no joke. And Especially when you're teaching new people, you got to have like the highest standard of... And never fucking touch a person tied into a rope swing. I don't care if you clipped in. Their natural reactions. Yeah. Because they're scared, especially a new person. They will pull you off the cliff and then they will feel bad because they survived. Don't give them hugs. Don't give them kisses. Don't touch a person clipped in to the rope swing and you always make sure that the person clipped in the rope swing has their personal anchor taken off. Because like that's really bad to jump off a cliff when you're still connected to it. Yeah. There's like... It's really safe except for these these moments. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I want to like, that's the, the part I really like about putting out this information. Like officially, I've made rope jumping videos. Yeah. It's like, these are the risks. And I just like, when I'm watching other people, blah, 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 I just like can't sometimes watch. Absolutely. I've had to walk away, like leave, like drive away. Cause I was like, I can't watch the way this is going. What's your process for a new person? Do you do a pocket check to make sure they don't have stuff? Does everybody do the pre-P thing? How do you cycle people through quickly? Do you have somebody yeah. guiding somebody? Okay, be on bathroom, harness, they check them while somebody's getting hauled up? Yep. So, so it's, it's really nice that both, or all three of us, me, Mateo, and I, all like come together to do this rope swing thing because all of us have all the technical knowledge from the 1300 jumps. So one person is manning the actual, uh, the hall point. One person is clipping people and one person is prepping people to get on. Perfect. And with our hall system, we'll get into this more in a second, but we use a caterpillar system. So people are already right there. Everybody who wants to jump is already right there hauling people up. And we've just got harnesses in a line. Oh, your hall system is people. Yes. The wonderful part about people pulling up people is everybody's kind of more emotionally engaged. It's more of a team activity. A winch has a lot of bored people waiting for their turn. And a lot of noise. A lot of noise. And, is, and once you get, what's, what do you think the magic number is? 15 people before it's like super easy? Yeah. I like think 10, it depends 10, on the 10 person. Works. You can do it with 10. Um, 12 is when it starts to get easier. And if you've got 15 to 20, man, you just, we, we can get people jumping every five, five to seven minutes when we've got 20 people pulling. Yeah. Which you need to if you've got 20 people pulling because they all want to go. Yep. <laughs> so do you have people walk and then come back and walk or do you treadmill? Uh, we, we treadmill. So, so you have the front person. You walk to the go. back, you go out and around, you re-grab onto the rope and you, yep. Which means if you have 10 people, you're always going to have like three of them not touching the rope mm -hmm. potentially. Um, it's nice when you have a long enough rope to spread out. It's kind of shitty when, when you're all like right up against each other. Yeah. Stepping over the bushes and stuff. It's nice that the fruit bowl we've got. Pretty much, uh, we've got about 50 feet of space that we can use. It's a lot of area. So you don't want your rope to fall down the cliff. So you usually have the end of it clipped off to, let's say, a bolt. Mm -hmm. But when you haul, it creates this loop. Do you just deal with it? Or do you unclip it and then just have a single strand being walked back? Because that's kind of a frustrating thing if you have the end of the haul line clipped to the, the cliff, mm -hmm. but you're grabbing... Okay, they're tight, and you start to walk, and you bottom out because it's still connected to the cliff. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> so we use a 300-meter haul rope, so it's way longer than what we need. So it's also clipped at the back of the line. So we've always got that rope going from the very back of the line. So it's like way back. Yeah. Gotcha. That's never been an issue. 300-meter haul line. So if you have a 70-meter swing, x squared plus y squared equals z something... You need a longer haul line in order to go diagonally straight down to the um, jumper to pull them up. But then you need enough rope to either get it around a winch or get enough people to start grabbing it. Uh, pro traction? Uh, at the, yes, pro at on the, the top. tripod? Mm -hmm. Is the tripod leaning over or do you have an edge roller because your tripod is like right here and not here? So there's some bolts placed pretty perfectly right at the fruit bowl. It's actually off to the left of the, the diving board where you jump off of the exit okay. point. And um, it's a tripod that has the end. It's like a steel beam that extends up. 
and mm. it goes right to the cliff edge. So as someone's coming up, you do get some rope drag on the edge. So we just keep some carpet right there to mitigate okay. abrasion. Um, but it's right there at the cliff edge. And do you do the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, stop? Yep. Right, as soon as they, so below the, the, the actual edge of the cliff, there's, there's free hanging space. And then once you get close enough, you can walk up the wall as you're going. And as soon as they start walking, that's when we slow down. Gotcha. So you have a slowdown period. Yep. Okay. So that's important. Like people can actually haul you up scary fast. Mm -hmm. And it's important to not um, pull them up into the white, like a wily e. coyote thing up underneath that, like a cliff edge, right? Or they're like feet or they're trip and then they get dragged. Like, so you have the spotter and then you just have, you have good communication with the team. <laughs> so let's talk about Rocky Talkie real quick. Cause that's not a joke. Um, Somebody broke their leg, Andy was telling me, and no one knew it. On a rope swing. Yeah, because everyone screams when they fucking go down, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And so basically, like, there's no way to communicate. And then when I jumped, um, Andrea and I had our stations on the wrong channel. And um, I, she was nowhere to be found, and she wasn't able to haul by herself. I needed her to do something so I could jug. It wasn't much. Mm -hmm. You just, like, pull me over. Because it's easy to pull people over until they start coming up. And so I had it all pre set up, but she, we had no communication. Like communication is really hard when they're 70, 100 meters away, line of sight, in a in a echo, canyon, in an echoey ca canyon. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so nice to have communication. Um, now you don't have a rocky talkie with your hall team; they're right there, but you have codes. It's like slow down. Five, four, three, two, one. Because otherwise, the person gets sucked up into the protraction, and that. And if you suck, you're not into a protraction. For, for those who might not know, um, a protraction is a progress capture device where the rope runs through it and it's got teeth facing, facing one direction. So you can pull it one way, but not the other. And if you suck, you're not all the way up to that. You, it's, it's stuck 20, in there. Like, 20 people's worth of muscle into it. <laughs> not yeah. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. One way that you can prevent the issue of really sucking that knot in there because I've heard of people having to cut the rope if you if you have 20 people pulling that knot into your it's just not coming out so <laughs> one way you can do that is uh, have like another point or a pulley or something in front of your protraction mm. and that way your knot gets sucked into mm. the pulley which is not a problem what's your experience with rope jump accidents or near misses <clears throat> okay so on a rope swing that wasn't mine it was actually the first rope swing that's I how they all start <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, on the very first rope swing that I ever jumped, um, really great guy. He's really experienced. And sometimes there's just accidents that you can't expect. And that's why they come accidents. So we were doing the insanity swing and someone jumped off the exit point the wrong way. So I, the natural tendency is to jump just out into the canyon. But someone was thinking, oh, if I jump towards the canyon, now you'll jump closer to the exit point and you might just drop and it'll turn into more of a bungee swing. So they were like, I'll jump backwards off of the exit point. It's nice to feel the rope that's going to be holding you, but that never works out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he hit the cliff edge below because he jumped towards the cliff as a way to, as opposed to wait the at canyon. the fruit bowl. Yeah, at the fruit bowl. Gotcha. So you've got you've got this point where here's your canyon. This is like the point you jump from. So they jumped this way, and there was like a little, just a little sub cliff down there, and they bounced off and maybe broke their tailbone or something, and. Yeah, so it's not, like, you shouldn't be embarrassed if you get hurt. Like, if anything, it needs to be shared because, like, we need data to know, like, where the risks are. We think we know where the risks are. Like, I make a big deal about things that technically people never died from. Mm -hmm. But if people are actually getting hurt, like, that's why we have accident reports at the ISA. So we need rope jumping accident reports. We don't want to be like, oh, might hurt their feelings. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Then again, I might argue that it's not important like who it happened to. I yeah, think I don't care who it happened to. I'm not going to yeah. put their name right here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also not the um, lead rigger's fault. If you jump a rope, <laughs> fucking jump it off a cliff. Like, check your own shit. Check their shit. <clears throat> Is everyone should have a little bit of self responsibility that you're taking a big risk and everyone's trying their darnest to not let anybody get hurt. Mm -hmm. But accidents happen, and I like talking about them here. Uh, most of the accidents I've heard of are people who are hitting things on the way down. Mm. And 
uh, try not to do that. Even Leaning Tower is overhanging, 110 degrees, most overhanging cliff in North America. Wow, I'm glad I looked down first. But that's, it has a hump on both sides. And then it humps down. But this goalie is the actual climb that most people are doing. And it's like, whoa. So I drew a little arrow in the moss and be like, stay within this range. My range was like only a 15 degree angle that I could jump. Because at 170 meters, you're like, it exaggerates stuff. Yeah. But you also, if you jump forward, you don't continue this speed. This speed stops eventually. So if you're trying to clear something, try, you know, like if you ever try to throw a rock and there's a long height, big height. It stops going out that way and eventually it just straight down. Yeah. So understand how this works if you're trying to... If you have a very, like, try to clear a tree or something. I've seen people, like, try to rope swing in Brazil, and they're, like, trying to clear things. Yeah. That's, like, gnar rope jumping if you're trying to, like, intentionally clear stuff. Because if you don't get a good footing or you're scared. But at the fruit bowl, I almost saw somebody break their tailbone at the edge. Somebody picked their feet up. Dude, that... Just, they pick their feet up. It's, like... It's so common. Leave. That way. Don't... Ooh. Yeah, because when all these people who come out who aren't, aren't used to being around cliffs, you know, flatlanders come out and they like, they're running, they're like super stoked and they see the edge and they realize they're about to jump off the edge. Their legs just stop moving in every single time. Not every single time, but like so often these people will go, they'll run and the only thing that prevents them from like just dropping onto the, the edge that they're trying to jump away from, Tension their legs runs. just like stop working and they drop and their back goes like six inches from the cliff and every single time we're like don't do that jump off of the cliff it, the tension from the ropes is sometimes nice when it is a little tight and feels like it's pulling you off because if somebody just lets go it kind of pulls them away because mm -hmm. you don't want to hit the back of their head yeah oh my god do not do flips if you suck <laughs> okay don't do a gainer if you're gonna hit your head on the cliff i'm just saying i feel like that's a blanket rule for everything we do here don't do things that are like outside of your ability what taylor does uh rope swing moab is they have somebody there and like yeah 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 and then they made later if you look at the videos they push you like pretty aggressively that's why now if you're doing inline rope swings you have to make sure that you're careful of the hall system that we're talking about it has that paracord holding up the the hall line is now in line with your high line and your jump ropes so now you have two pieces of webbing two ropes paracord and a haul line all going to this same point and i actually think that's what killed dan osman is he didn't have a full haul system or two ropes but i think the like the thing that pulled his rope back to the cliff um crossed over he didn't cross over the main line um that's my theory in line rope jumping has, is more technical we, when we did Dano, removed our hull system every single time because we, we wanted simplicity and don't we just don't want ropes rubbing ropes. As always, abrasion is your, your worst enemy on this thing. Where'd you get your tripod? We made it. Uh, we've actually got a friend. Um, he's out in California and he's a, a fabricator and he just welded a bunch of steel beams together for us. Wow, steel. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's heavy to carry out there, but... It's nice to have the strength. Um, cool. So join that Facebook group. Um, binge all these videos. Check out the textbook if I have it out by now, by the time you watch this. It's nice that we share such similar styles in doing it, having never rope swing together. Maybe we're doing something right or we're both doing something wrong. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you decide. Yeah. So there's already a community that's kind of we all haul back up to the jump point usually because then you're not having to walk the rope around and it's it's just a lot easier. Yeah, that's a really dangerous point if you're walking along the cliff edge with something that you're... Yeah, that's why I tried to figure out a way to do the extra paracord to hold the haul line because I actually jumped with a tagline once and it got stuck. Luckily, it was a really flimsy one. Yeah. And, just... and it snapped. Um, but if it stopped us, we had stopped us mid-swing. Oh, goodness, And there's yeah. two of us. Oh, in tandems? I just like to video in this video with don't do tandems.